Welcome back to Second Recapped. At the beginning of the movie, Charles Rain is a well-known British terrorist who has been responsible for numerous bombings, assassinations, and other heinous crimes. Despite his criminal history, he has never been apprehended. The truth is that Charles is also an escape artist, using his power and deception to avoid capture. In the first scene, we see him in a surgery room, surrounded by several doctors. Charles is about to undergo a procedure that will completely alter his facial appearance. He is about to do it for the tenth time. When the head doctor asks if he needs anesthesia to deal with the pain, Charles refuses, claiming that he enjoys it. He wishes to have the surgery while fully conscious. Meanwhile, some cops have gathered outside the building. Someone has informed them of Charles's whereabouts, and they have arrived to storm the surgery room and apprehend him. However, before they begin the mission, the chief cop warns everyone that Charles is a dangerous assassin capable of killing several men on his own. They eventually make their way to the 13th floor, where the surgery is about to begin. Charles, unfortunately, is well prepared. He finishes off the chief doctor, dodges the barrage of bullets, and then runs through the corridor as soon as the cops enter the room. Charles then smashes a glass window and leaps from the building. Moreover, despite falling from the 13th floor, he lands perfectly and without injury. He can even run at full speed as if jumping from buildings is his specialty. Regardless of how fast he runs, the cops have cars and eventually corner him. After 15 years of evasion, the notorious Charles Rain is finally apprehended in this manner. The action then shifts to an airplane, where a lovely flight attendant, Marta, checks on each passenger one by one. Everything appears to be going swimmingly until a shady-looking man pulls out a gun and kidnaps her. If his demands are not met, he threatens to kill her. In response, Marta casually kicks him in the leg, giving a nearby passenger enough time to take the gun away from him. After this, everyone starts clapping, and it's finally revealed that the whole thing was just a practice session to train the flight attendants in self-defense. The shady-looking guy is John Cutter, decorated soldier and retired Secret Service agent who is known for his tough stance on high-level crimes. After a while, the general manager of Atlantic International Airlines, Sly Del Vecchio, arrives and takes John away. It appears as if the two are good friends. Sly asks him to get back in the business and serve the nation once again, but John refuses. He mentions that he no longer wants to risk his life for others. Nonetheless, Sly offers him a job as the head of the counter-terrorism unit in Atlantic International Airlines. John thinks for a while and finally accepts when he is told that he only has to work twice a month. Elsewhere, Charles is escorted to his cell, where his attorney is waiting for him. The latter reveals that the authorities are planning to take him to California and execute him in the chair. The only way to avoid it is if Charles pleads insanity. Unfortunately, the notorious terrorist doesn't take the suggestion in good terms, and he bashes the attorney against the table claiming I am not insane. In the next scene, we see a shirtless John meditating and reminiscing about his past. The movie then flashes back to a few years ago where John and his late wife are shopping in a convenience store. Suddenly, a robber arrives there and attempts to steal money from the counter. As a man of integrity, John tries to stop him, but the robber holds his wife hostage. Everyone in the store backs away. But despite this, the robber shoots the poor woman. John eventually kills him, but when he returns to check on his wife, she is already dead. The incident traumatized him so much that he quit his work as a special agent and isolated himself for months. In the present, John gets ready for his first day at work. He has to stay anonymous and guard a large Lockhead airline with almost 200 passengers in it. John is assigned with seat number 57, hence the name of the movie. Coincidentally, Charles and two FBI agents also board the plane, indicating that the flight is heading for California. One of the flight attendants is Marta, while the other one is a beautiful young girl named Sabrina. 
Meanwhile, a little boy sees Charles and fires an imaginary bullet at him. In response, the cold-hearted killer pretends to be dead. However, when he shoots the boy back, his cuffs are revealed, which alarms the passengers nearby him. They start wondering if the flight is safe, and Sabrina assures them that there is nothing to worry about. After a while, she calls a suspicious-looking staff in the lower deck and asks him to send over the special service. The guy obliges and puts a metal briefcase on the waiting tray. At the same time, John, who is annoyed by his chatty seatmate, gets up and heads to the restroom to have some alone time. Once he locks the door, Sabrina retrieves the content from the metal box and it turns out to be a gun. She then proceeds towards the two unsuspecting FBI agents and shoots them in the head, much to everyone's horror. After Charles unlocks his cuffs, three of his goons emerge out of their seats and threaten everyone to remain silent. Here, it is revealed that Charles had everything planned all along. When he got to know that the agents were escorting him in a commercial airline, he immediately hired some people to hijack it. In the next scene, Charles heads to the cockpit and shoots one of the pilots dead to assert his dominance. Then, he announces over the radio that they are going to change courses and that the plane is officially hijacked. However, if the passengers remain calm and obey his orders, no harm will come to them. John who is still in the restroom, overhears all of this and gets terrified. He somehow manages to get a hold of the plane's onboard phone and explain the situation to his friend, Sly. Following this, he expertly subdues one of the hijackers, takes his gun, and then uses him as a shield to confront Charles. The latter also grabs Marta, creating an intense showdown between the two. However, Charles soon lets go of the flight attendant and shoots an innocent man to prove his point. He then fires a shot towards John, but it accidentally kills one of his henchmen. Taking advantage of the commotion, John and Marta run away from there, enter the elevator, and take it all the way down to the cargo hold. There, they come across the suspicious-looking guy from earlier and inquire if he knows anything about the hijackers. The man pretends to be shocked but at an opportune moment, he whips out a knife and tries attacking John. The two then engage in an intense duel and in the end, our protagonist manages to knock the bad guy out with an impressive kick. After tying him up, Marta and John head to the avionics section of the plane, where the latter proposes that they dump all the fuel and force an emergency landing. Marta strictly opposes the idea, as it could easily result in a crash. But when John explains that it is their only way, she allows him to proceed. Once the fuel is almost empty, the two head towards the landing gear, as it is the best place to jump out of the plane without sustaining many injuries. Fortunately, the plan works, and when Charles learns that they are running low on fuel, he requests the pilots to make an emergency landing at the nearest airport. Meanwhile, at the Atlantic International Headquarters, Sly and his superiors find out that the hijacked plane is preparing to land at a small airstrip in Lake Lucille, Louisiana. Hence, without wasting any time, Sly boards a chopper and heads to the location. Elsewhere, John and Marta are waiting for the plane to land so that they can jump out of it. Few moments later, the plane eventually comes to a halt. But when the two are about to jump, one of the hijackers ambushes them from behind. John is pushed out of the plane while Marta is taken hostage once again. Two cops arrive at the scene and immediately arrest John, despite his best attempts to claim that he was the head of security on the plane. As he is being escorted away, Charles makes contact with the control tower and the chief sheriff, Mr. Biggs, answers him. Charles immediately makes his demands clear that the plane needs to be refueled inside 10 minutes. In return, he promises to release 100 passengers. When the sheriff refuses to accept the deal, Charles kills five passengers to make a statement. This terrifies Mr. Biggs and he finally gives the green light to refuel the plane. After a while, John is brought to the control tower and even Mr. Biggs thinks that he is one of the bad guys. His doubts are finally confirmed when the cunning Charles calls him once again and lies that John is one of his men, who escaped after betraying him. 
Hearing this, Mr. Biggs orders his officers to lock John in the basement, but the latter impressively fights them off, grabs a police motorcycle, and heads to the airstrip. Meanwhile, after the plane is refueled, Charles releases 100 passengers as promised. However, taking advantage of the commotion, he also sneaks out with the suspicious-looking guy and another man. The three then head to a nearby fair. At the control tower, the FBI finally arrives and asks Mr. Biggs to give a full report on the situation. When the sheriff mentions that they had beat up and caught John Cutter, the head agent gets angry and finally reveals that John is one of them. Elsewhere at the carnival fair, Charles and his men are secretly tailed by John, who is still adamant on catching them. Unfortunately, his cover is blown, and one of the hijackers attempts to shoot him, but misses. An innocent person takes the bullet, resulting in a full-blown chaos. Meanwhile, John climbs up a Ferris wheel, and one of the hijackers follows him there. The two engage in a small tussle, which ends with the man being chucked off the Ferris wheel, resulting in his immediate death. After this, John jumps onto the unsuspecting Charles and eventually subdues him. As the FBI and the local officers take him away, Sly Del Vacchio also arrives and congratulates his friend for successfully tackling the terrorist. However, little did they know that the problem is far from over. Charles threatens the officers that if he isn't let free, his goons in the plane will start killing the passengers one by one. An enraged John tries to negotiate with him, but to no avail. So, with no options left, the FBI and the other officials decide to let Charles back into the plane. However, they have an idea. They will deploy snipers on top of a nearby building, and as soon as Charles and the other hijackers appear in sight, they will be shot dead. John is ordered to lead the entire mission. In the next scene, two FBI agents lead Charles to the plane, but as they are about to enter, the snipers start shooting them instead. It turns out that the suspicious-looking guy from earlier has killed the original snipers and is now gunning down all the FBI agents. Soon, a shootout between the hijackers and the agents ensues, which results in several deaths, including that of the suspicious-looking guy. The plane also starts getting away, but John is not going to give up so easily. He, along with Sly, gets into Mr. Big's car and asks him to chase the plane. The idea is to grab hold of the retractable landing gear and enter the plane through it. Although the stunt is an extremely dangerous one, it is a piece of cake for Mr. Cutter. He effortlessly clings onto the landing gear like it's his daily bread and butter. Once inside, he goes to the cargo hold and kills one of the hijackers. Then, he sneaks onto Sabrina from behind and knocks her out. Now, the only hijacker left standing is the notorious Charles himself. Before confronting him however, John heads to the cockpit and asks the passengers to change course and head back to the Lake Lucille airstrip. After this, the final showdown begins. Despite John being a trained fighter, Charles matches him stride for stride. A stray bullet in their fight shatters one of the windows, causing the loss of air pressure in the plane. The main door is also blown out, and Marta, who is standing just next to it, is left hanging for her dear life. Fortunately, John acts quickly and takes Charles near the broken exit. The two then exchange some final blows, and at the end, John prevails by kicking the terrorist out of the plane. With him now dead, the madness is finally over and all the passengers celebrate by busting out some cringe moves. John then contacts his superiors at the control tower and informs them that he has taken down Charles, making them rejoice in happiness. In the final scene, the plane finally lands and all the passengers are escorted to safety. John, who is fed up with all the commotion, doesn't even bother facing the reporters and simply walks away with his new girlfriend, Marta. The movie ends as Sly talks to the reporters and proudly says that he was in charge of the entire operation, 